Hi there, kids. It's me, Miss Booksy, your cool school librarian. Ever notice how there's always a bad guy in fairy tales? And did you ever notice that a lot of the time that bad guy is a wolf, as in the big bad wolf? So let's take a look at all the cool school stories where we see the big bad wolf and all his big bad wolfiness. Arr. Let's go. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Not the same piggies who went to the market to get roast beef and then for some odd reason went wee 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 all the way home. No, these three little pigs are builders and are about to build their very first homes. The first little pig didn't really want to build a house. He didn't think it was very exciting at all. The only point of having a house at all was to have somewhere to put your TV and video games. So he found some straw and made a little house with it. Not a very good house, but he built it pretty fast. The second little pig wasn't very interested in house building either. He didn't want to waste time or money shopping for hammers and nails, so he quickly made his house with sticks, stacked up and held together with chewed up bubble gum and scotch tape. Hmm, might not be the best way to build a house, but it did make a great pick for all his Twitter followers. Since the first two pigs were finished pretty quickly, they skipped on over to the third pig's house. He was building his house with bricks. He was making a very serious house. The two other pigs were shocked. Bricks cost like a hundred dollars or something. Yeah, and it's gonna take you like forever. But once I'm finished, I will have a very sturdy house that will last and last. Whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever, we'll see you later. We're gonna go play. The third little pig wanted to go play, but he had work to do. He stayed and worked and worked and worked until his house was done. And hey, it looked pretty good, and it was solid as a rock. The first little pig sat down to eat his supper, a frozen pizza. He didn't have an oven, so he was just eating it like a popsicle. Someone knocked on his straw door. Who is it? Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Which in pig Latin means, no way. Well then I'll have to huff and puff and then blow your house down. The little pig didn't like the sound of that. Uh oh. <laughs> the house of straw blew away in one second, leaving the little pig just sitting in his chair surrounded by a pile of straw. The big bad wolf smiled and waved. Oh, hello there, little pig. Ah! The pig squealed, and he ran to his brother's house of sticks. He was telling his brother about the wolf when... Who is it? Oh, little pigs, let me in. Not, Not by, by the, the hair, hair of, of our chinny chin chins. chins. Well, I guess I'll just have to huff and then puff and then blow your house down. Uh-oh. That's a bummer. The big bad wolf grinned at them, but the little pig squealed and ran, ee, all the way to their brother's house, the one he made of bricks. They told him about the big bad wolf and how he was huffing and puffing and blowing down houses. And just as they were finishing up their story, there was a knock at the door. No wolves allowed. Is that right? Okay then, I'll just huff. Oh no, this is bad. He's very good at this. And I'll puff. This next part is the very bad part. And I'll blow your house down. But nothing happened. What was that you said, Mr. Wolf? <clears throat> I, I, I said I'll huff. And I'll puff. Yes, and... And I'll blow your house down! Still, all this huffing and puffing couldn't blow down the house of bricks. This was very embarrassing for the wolf. The three little pigs danced and sang that they weren't afraid of the big bad wolf. But then they heard a noise at the window. He's coming in through the window! Hide! Don't worry, I have the latest technology in window locks and that glass is unbreakable. It's the stuff they use to build space shuttles and shark tanks. Cost me a pretty penny, but it's sure worth it now. The wolf tried as hard as he could, but he couldn't get in through the window. He stared in at the little pigs as they danced and sang. He didn't like this one bit. He looked all around. Aha! The chimney. The wolf climbed up onto the roof and scooted down the chimney. Not cool, wolf. 
The chimneys are for cozy winter nights by the fire, and Santa only. The wolf shimmy down, and instead of making a grand, terrifying entrance, the wolf plopped right into the third little pig's cook pot. Yay! Ouch! Hot, 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 hot! The wolf saw the third little pig in his apron holding a spoon. Oh, are you going to eat me? Please don't. I don't want to be dinner. Please, please, pretty please. Eat you? No way. I'm a vegetarian. But stop crying and please get out of my ratatouille. You're going to ruin the seasoning. The wolf splashed out of the ratatouille. He didn't look so scary now, all covered in sauce and whimpering like a little pup. You ruined my house. I'm sorry. And mine. I'm sorry. And you ruined my ratatouille. Still tastes all right. No, now it's got wolf hair in it. Gross. The pigs had no choice but to take the wolf to pork court, where the judge, a very old and wise pig, decided that the wolf would have to repay the pigs by helping them rebuild their houses and being their butler for a whole year. Turns out, he made a pretty good ratatouille. Who knew? And so the three pigs learned that hard work can pay off, and they all lived in their sturdy brick houses happily ever after. Today's story is Little Red Riding Hood. It worked! Okay, once upon a time, a little girl named Little Red Riding Hood, that's me, was packing a nice dinner to take to her grandma's house. My grandma was sick, and even though I had to walk a mile, I was ready to help my grandma because that's what good kids do, right? I packed up a sweet dinner, liver and onions and peas. Oh, you don't like that? Okay then, fruit roll up, some pizza, ice cream, and four Twinkies. Okay, good choices. Now, there's only one good way to get to Grandma's. It's right through the scariest forest you can imagine. That's not scary. Oh, my bad. Better? Yay! Good. Whoa, but then someone or something snatched my red hood. <gasps> and snatched my basket of delicious snacks. <sighs> I've been robbed. Kids, robbed. By a wolf! I said a wolf. And the wolf was wearing my red hood. That's a little girl's hood. He could stretch it out, the darn wolf. And he just looked silly, too. Then he spoke. What is a little girl like you doing all by herself in the woods like this? Going to my grandma's house, if it's any of your business, and it's not. So please, give me back my stuff! Aren't you a sassy lassie? Maybe I will go to your grandmother's house and eat her. What do you think about that? Put some sauce on her, maybe some ketchup or mayonnaise, I don't know. Oh no you won't! You're not putting mayonnaise on my grandma! I yelled and I kicked, and, but the wolf ran off! And wolves can run pretty fast, even when they're wearing little girl's red coat that doesn't fit quite right. I had to get to Grandma's, and fast. There was a dangerous wolf in the woods, so I ran. Faster! Run faster? Yeah. Uh, okay. Faster! Okay! Woo! Uh, we're here, at Grandma's house. Let me in, Grandma! There's a dang wolf outside in the woods, and he's stealing little girl's clothes, and parading around, and I had a... <laughs> And this time, he's wearing my grandma's nightgown and sleeping cap. He even had on a pair of her high heels. And he was licking his paws, just like he'd eaten a snack. Or maybe, my grandma, what can I do? He's a wolf. But I had an idea. It was a good idea. I ran, and I ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran really, really fast. Okay. Like a cheetah. Like a cheetah? What's that sound? It's like a... Clack, 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 clack. Is that the... <gasps> Look at that wolf! And he's still wearing my grandma's high heels. And you'll understand one day, it's impossible to run in high heels. Then, right there, with his twisted ankle and his belly full of my grandma, he started to get sick. It was really gross. He, he, the big bad wolf threw up. Ew. He threw up all over the place. <laughs> He threw up my grandma. Oh, don't worry, she was fine, not a scratch. He threw up all the fruit roll-ups and the ice cream and the pizza and the Twinkies. 
I don't feel so good. It was gross. But it gave me and Grandma time to get away. We called the police and the firemen and animal control, Dog the Bounty Hunter, and everybody we could think of. And I'm happy to tell you the wolf was caught and sold to the circus. Well, my grandma and I go every time it's in town. And it just happens to be in town today. Lucky you. <laughs> Follow me, I'll show you around. Ooh, look, it's the clown car. Guess how many clowns can fit in one tiny car? Four? Nope. Eleven? <laughs> no, that's a pretty good guess, but it's 24 whole clowns. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 22, 23, 24. That's like the highest number there is. There's Octavio, the guitar playing octopus. Cool. Hey there, little red riding hood. Any requests? Nope, just your usual. <laughs> new a man-eating chicken uh, scary it looks like it's starting oh oh yeah oh chicken's my favorite oh i get it a man eating chicken <laughs> you got me oh kids there he is the ferocious wolf that ate my grandma i gotta admit he's great on the tightrope Still wearing those heels, too. Wow, the wolf's got skills. And what's that under the tightrope? It looks like delicious mac and cheese, you know? The gooey, cheesy kind your mom makes? Maybe with a little breadcrumb topping, three cheese blend? But no, that's cold. Macaroni noodles and mayonnaise. Like the stuff people bring to potlucks. Ugh. More like pot yuck. You're doing great, Wolfie. Stay focused. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta stay focused. There's my favorite circus act, Five Little Monkeys. They jump on those trampolines like crazy. Don't worry, if they fall off, there's a doctor right there. How you doing? Hey, look, it's Jack, the flame jumper. He gets better every time I see him. The flame swallower! Talk about heartburn! <gasps> and finally, no circus would be complete without an amazing juggler! That's right, kids! I'm a wicked good juggler! <laughs> All right, kids, bring yourself in for a rhyming lesson. It's nursery rhyme time. We are five pigs, they all live together, sisters, brothers, living together in a good community. A pig neighborhood, if you will. So we've got this one, first one, right? She's pretty, pretty little pig. She went to the market. She decided it's getting a bit cold out, I need a new cardigan. And she's also going to pick up some produce, probably some nice vegetables. And this little piggy... He stayed home. Do you know why? I'll tell you why, because he wanted to play some video games. This little piggy had roast beef. Loves a good Reuben. This little piggy had none. He doesn't eat meat. He's a vegetarian. Well, pescatarian, because he eats fish. Oh no! And this little piggy, he was out in the woods and he ran into the big old bad wolf. You remember him? Why, hello. What is a little pig like you doing in the woods? So he cries, wee, 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 all the way home. And he was safe inside the beautiful brick house. Here it is, all summed up. This little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And this little piggy ran wee, wee, wee all the way home. It's a strange rhyme. It's supposed to help you count your fingers or your toes or something. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I'm Brittany. And I'm Austin, and this is Kylan. You can find us on our channel, The Knife Knoll. <laughs> But right now, we're hanging out with the cool school for our story time. Today, we're going to be reading Little Red Riding Hood. Let's go. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'm excited. 
Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Little Red Riding Hood who loved her grandma more than just about anything in the whole wide world. She loved her this much. This much! <laughs> One day, her grandma got sick, so Little Red packed up a picnic basket of get well foods like chicken soup, orange juice, vitamins, ginger ale, and gummy bears. Okay, so maybe the gummy bears were actually for herself, but it was a very nice get well basket. Little Red Riding Hood set off for her grandma's house. She was about halfway there when out jumped a wolf. Don't worry, Little Red Riding Hood was trained in wolf karate, so she was not afraid. Going to a picnic? Nope. I'm going to my grandma's house because she's sick. I'm going to take care of her. <laughs> well, aren't you nice? Yes, I am. Now buzz off. <laughs> Can I have some of that chicken soup? No way. That's my grandma's soup. And I said, scram. <laughs> the wolf ran off down the path, howling. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood was glad he was gone. She didn't have time to be bothering with any stinking wolves. She had to get to her grandma. When Little Red finally arrived, she skipped up to the front door and knocked. Grandma, it's me, Little Red. Oh, just a minute. Hmm, that didn't sound like her grandma. Then the door opened and well. <gasps> oh, hello, give Grandma a hug. Needless to say, she wasn't fooled. Where's my grandma? Don't be silly, child. I'm your grandmother now. If only I had some chicken soup. I already told you, you're not getting my grandma's chicken soup. Now, where is she? Hm. Little Red, I'm in here. Huh? Little Red Riding Hood looked all around. Where was grandma's voice coming from? The closet, under the bed, in the bathroom? The wolf stood there patting his tummy. He burped. <laughs> then Little Red realized, you ate my grandma? Well, I, I swallowed her whole, actually. <laughs> I was just so hungry. Someone was being greedy with her chicken soup. Well, kids, Little Red Riding Hood didn't want it to come to this, but she was going to have to use her wolf karate. She bowed and went into her fighting stance. She took a deep breath. And then... What are you doing? <sighs> she went full ninja on that wolf. He tried to run, but he was so full of grandma that he couldn't even go very fast. Please stop, I, I don't know karate, this isn't fair. Give her back, give her back. But I already swallowed her. You give my grandma back, And just like that, he threw up. <laughs> Out came grandma, she was just fine. A little icky, but alive. Little Red called the police and they came and arrested the wolf. Grandma got better and Little Red Riding Hood got a medal from the mayor for outstanding citizen bravery in a wolf battle. And her martial arts instructor upgraded her to a black belt with special stripes that meant she was extra good at karate. The end. Hello kids, here we are with another nursery rhyme time. Today's story is about a cookie. You see, there was this woman and she was a baker and she was running out of ideas on how to get kids to buy her delicious cookies. Well, one night she had a dream about a little man who was made of cookie. She woke up at 3.47 in the morning, as bakers usually do, and got to baking. And after hours of trial and error, made a little man out of gingerbread. End of story. Just kidding. That's where the story really begins. Come here. I need to eat you. You can't eat me. I have so much to live for. I've never gone sailing. I've never had my first kiss. I've never run in a field or been to Paris. There's so much to do. And with that, he ran out of the house and into the field. I'm actually doing it! I'm running in a field! I'm gonna get you, little man! Run, run, as fast as you can! You can't catch me! I'm the gingerbread man! And he ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, as fast as his little legs could carry him, until the old woman baker was out of sight, and then he rested by the river. Well, sleeping by the river was a wolf. Or at least, he thought the wolf was sleeping. She's going to come for you. I can always run away. You wouldn't have to run away if you crossed the river. But I can't. I'm made of gingerbread. I'll get all soggy and fall to pieces. 
I was just getting ready to cross the river myself. Why don't you ride on my head? You could hold my ears, see the view, maybe fish a little, I don't know. And just then, the old woman came into sight in the distance, and the cookie man began to panic. Well, the big old wolf hopped into the river and shouted at him, Quick, hop on before she gets here! The gingerbread man was torn. There was nowhere to run, and so he leaped into the air towards the wolf's head and shouted to the woman, Run, run as fast as you can! You can't catch me on the... <laughs> Delicious! I was going to eat that! He was eaten by the big bad wolf and spent the rest of his days playing pinochle with Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother in the wolf's stomach. And that's the end of the tale. This story is... The Three Little Pigs. Alright, here we go. So. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived at home with their mother. The time came when the pigs weren't so little anymore, and their mom decided to buy a condo and move to Florida, where she could play pig knuckle with their friends by the pool. She told the pigs, It's time you set out for the real world and find homes of your own. I'll send you a postcard. So off they went. The first pig found a nice location and decided to build his own house. He'd heard of building huts with straw, so he went shopping for some. Target had a huge sale on crazy straw, so he bought all they had and commenced to building. It turned out to be a really neat looking house, although it leaked a lot when it rained. But it was very pretty. The second pig decided he should use sticks to build his house. He bought popsicles in bulk at Costco, and after a two-day feast of ice pops and a lot of brain freeze, he began his house of sticks. It turned out... okay. The walls were thin, but they smelled like fruity popsicles. Mm. The third pig was never one to cut corners and he found a good contractor to build his home. Hiring a contractor and a construction crew was expensive. It took almost all his money, but he wanted a home that would last. The other pigs made fun of him and bragged about how much money they had in their banks. That's right, piggy banks. But the third little pig moved into his new brick house and was quite content. Well, maybe a little lonely. <laughs> Yep, that night the bad old wolf went out on the prowl looking for a snack. He had seen the little pigs building their houses and thought he'd stop by uninvited. He arrived at the first pig's house. He snarled. Little pig, little pig, let me in. The pig called out. Who is it? I'm just a nice old lady. I'm lost, let me in. No, that's a wolf! You sound like a big bad wolf, so not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Go ahead and try. I built it myself and the wolf blew down the house with a little huff and puff just like that. Let's watch that on an instant replay. And boom goes the dynamite. The little pig hightailed it to his brother's house made of sticks and that bad old wolf followed him. There was a knock on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me in. It's the wolf. No, I'm just here to deliver the mail. La la la, I'm the mailman. He said it's the mailman. It's nighttime, there's no mail. I'm telling you it's the wolf. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. He's gonna huff and puff and blow your house down, man. And he did. The wolf huffed and puffed and he blew the house down. Sticks all over the place. The two little pigs motored out as fast as they could. You've never seen two little legs move so fast. And that bad wolf, he followed them right to the third pig's house. Safe inside, the pigs told their brother about the wolf. The doorbell chimed. Ding dong. The third little pig used his security system to check who was outside. Oh, little piggies. Don't be rude, what men? I don't think so, not by the hair of my chitty chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Gotta say, I've had a pretty good track record so far tonight. I'm two for two, just saying. Very well, do what you wish. The wolf huffed and he puffed and <laughs> nothing happened. Okay, okay, it was the third house of the night. He could do this. He huffed, 
and puffed and still there the house stood. It was very sturdy. The little pig buzzed through the intercom. How are you doing out there? I might have to call the police if you don't leave. The wolf gasped and gulped for air. You gotta wait till I huff and puff it and I'll blow you out. The wolf fainted. The three little pigs cheered. Yay! The third pig called the authorities and he had them come and take the wolf away. The first two pigs apologized for poking fun at the third little pig and they offered to pay rent if they could just stay with him for a little while. He told them, Mi casa es su casa, which in Spanish means my house is your house. I think I mentioned that pig is pretty smart. <laughs> and the three little pigs stayed in their big brick house together and they lived happily ever after and never ever heard from that big bad wolf again. The end. So kids, the lesson is, it's important to do things the right way, even if it's the hard way. And watch out for wolves, that's pretty important too. Hi guys, we're Gabrielle and Chad. And this is Siege. Today, we're over at Cool School for the Story Circle. That's right, and we're gonna read The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Are you ready? Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Terry. He was a bit of a terror. In fact, he was called Terry the Terror. <laughs> He would kick and scream anytime he wanted something. At the toy store. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. At the ice cream shop. I want more, 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 now, 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 now. Even at the grocery store. I don't want cereal. <laughs> I want cookies, want cookies, I want cookies. And with everything he could have ever wanted at his fingertips, he was a pretty bored boy at that. Ho, oh, um. Bored. Bored boys often get into trouble, and boy did Terry get into trouble. He would take cupcakes from the baker's window. He would let the chickens loose from old Mr. O'Brien's chicken farm. <laughs> and worst of all, he would run up behind old Mr. Hackle and scream, which didn't matter much because Mr. Hackle couldn't hear too well. Eh? Luckily for Terry, the townspeople were very patient people. The baker learned to make one extra cupcake every morning so that she wouldn't be short for the customers. Mr. O'Brien trained his chickens to come to his call so that if they got loose, they would come back. <coughs> and Mr. Hackle still made Terry help him across the street. Life went on as usual, and as usual, Terry got bored. One day when he went out into the woods tearing leaves off trees and splashing in mud, Terry came up with an idea. Hey, I have an idea. It's genius. Everyone will totally flip out and I will laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> the next morning, when everyone was getting ready for Terry to come tearing through town, he didn't show up. The baker said, That's weird. I have one extra cupcake today. The farmer called for his chickens, but they were already there, staring at him. Ah. Mr. Hackle just stood by the corner waiting. Hmm? Well, after an hour went by, people started to worry. And just then, Terry came running into town screaming, Wolf, 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 hey everybody, there's a wolf! There's a wolf, run for your lives, wolf, 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 help, 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 help. there's a wolf! The baker quickly slammed the shutter so fast her cupcakes splattered everywhere. Old Mr. O'Brien ushered all his chickens inside of his maximum security chicken coop and locked the doors. Everyone in town scrambled to their houses and stores and locked them up tight, leaving Terry laughing in the town square. <laughs> you silly people, there's no wolf. You fell for it. <laughs> Oh, that was almost too easy. <laughs> hmm? Everyone in the town was upset. Old Mr. O'Brien's chickens were so upset, they didn't lay eggs for three days. But Terry thought it was all extremely funny. After things got back to normal, Terry began to feel mischievous again. Hey, I wonder if they would fall for it a second time. <laughs> Uh, we'll find out. And so the next morning, Terry called out from the woods. Wolf! 
wolf, 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 help, help, wolf. <laughs> I mean, help. The baker and old Mr. O'Brien squinted their eyes and looked off into the woods. And just then, Terry came limping out of the woods with his shirt torn and dirt all over his face. He was really going for a Daytime Emmy Award this time. Everyone began to panic because this time it had to be real. The baker slammed her cupcakes in the window. <coughs> Old man O'Brien cooped up his chickens. And everyone ran inside. Everyone except <laughs> Terry and well, except for Mr. Hackle. But that's just because he couldn't hear all the fuss. Hmm? Oh, you fools, you silly, silly people. There's no wolf. You fell for it again. <laughs> Twice. That's two. <laughs> Tune it up at me, you. <laughs> After a few days, things got back to normal. Terry wasn't allowed to go into town anymore. He was grounded for three whole weeks. <sighs> One day, Terry was playing in the yard, and guess who showed up? A real live wolf. Hello. Hungry wolf, that's me. Well, well, oh no, wolf, real wolf, real wolf. <laughs> In town, the baker heard Terry crying. Is that for real? Oh, that's just Terry the terror at it again. I'm not falling for that this time. And old Mr. O'Brien heard Terry crying. Don't worry, girls. It's just Terry the terror at it again. And Mr. Hackle, well, you guessed it. He didn't hear anything anyway. He didn't even look up from his crossword puzzle. Hmm? The whole town ignored Terry yelling because they knew it must have been a trick. And then the wolf ate Terry in one bite. Mm, that was a good little boy. Luckily for Terry, the same wolf also ate Little Red Riding Hood's grandma, which turned out to be too much. And he threw them both up. Wow! Wow! Oh, that is, that is just wrong. That is just wrong. Who are you? Terry ran home and told his parents who had a hard time believing him. But one thing Terry knew for sure, he was going to be a very good boy for the rest of his life. The moral of the story is, don't trick people, especially when it comes to safety. Always tell the truth, don't hang around wolves, and don't scare chickens if you're hoping to have some eggs. <laughs> the end. All right, kids, here it is, nursery rhyme time. First things first, meet the family. Pork him in the pig, Piggly the pig, and Alfonso the pig. Just finished college and eager to grow up. So the first one, Pork him in. He decides, I'm gonna build a house and I really like straw cause it's like soft. So yeah, I'm gonna do that or whatever. And so he does. And he has this big soft house that kind of sways with the breeze. Well then the second pig, Piggly, he decides he's gonna move out too. I like sticks. I wanna build a house out of them. I mean, trees are strong, so my house will be strong. And so he does. And it's kind of vintage, you know? Like got a little flavor of like Portland, but not like Main Street Portland. Kind of like an offbeat Portland, like one of the suburbs. Then Alfonso, the third pig, decides he's gonna move out too. So he says, I looked at the schematics of most of the other houses and it seems that brick is a very solid material. I will design my house like so many historic buildings before me with brick. Pokemon and Piggly think that this is not the smartest idea he's ever come up with. You're never gonna finish that house. It's gonna take like a long time or whatever. Yeah, it's gonna take like forever. <laughs> and it did take a while, but once it was done, the real test of strength came. You see, there was this traveling salesman, Mr. Wolf, who was actually a wolf. Want to buy some things? No, I have enough stuff. But you don't have this stuff. No, thank you, all right? If you don't open this door, I'll blow your house down. Try me. 
And not only did the wolf blow his house down because it was made of flimsy straw and whatnot, but he also blew down the stick house as well. Then he decided to pay Alfonso a visit. Come on, pig, buy us some nice things. We don't want your things, get out of here. Yeah. No, and besides, I'm uh, going to blow your house down. <laughs> and he tried, but he just couldn't. And he got all faint in the head and fell down. And Porkyman, Piggly, and Alfonso lived happily ever after in three beautiful brick houses. Nothing to rhyme about, no, just a story. Moral of the story, take your time, do things right, and it'll pay off in the end. All right, kids, get ready. It's fairy tale time. Once upon a time. That's what we old folks say when we're not sure of the date. But way back when, there was an old man who built puppets. The kind with strings attached to their arms and legs and heads, called marionettes, actually. This man was a very lonely old man, and so he would build these puppets to keep him company. Pretty smart, actually. Well, one day, this old man built a puppet so amazing that it actually started to move on its own. Well, hi. Are you my papa? I sure am. And you are Pinocchio. Beautiful. What a lovely way to end a story. But that's not the end. For you see, a traveling circus came into town that day, which was run by the big bad wolf. And this wolf had gotten into the business of convincing children to run away with him and perform in the circus. But it wasn't as fun as that sounds. The wolf made them walk on a tightrope, which was really scary, and swing on the trapeze, which made them really dizzy, and brush lion's manes, which was really dangerous. Worst of all, they had to clean up after the elephants when they did their business. Sorry. But Pinocchio didn't know about any of that. He just wanted to see the show. Well, that night, the old man gave Pinocchio some money and asked him to run to the store to buy some milk. Okay, Papa. But he was going to buy a ticket to the circus instead. And because it was a lie, his nose started to grow. Well then, Pinocchio went to the circus and had the time of his life. But he saw all the other children in the crowd eating popcorn and cotton candy, and he was sad that he couldn't eat anything because he was made of wood. So after the show, just as the first star began to sparkle in the sky, he made a wish. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might turn into a real boy tonight. Well, the big bad wolf saw Pinocchio and thought that a wooden boy would be a great circus act. And he can use that giant nose to spin plates on top of. So he put on an old dress from the circus costume trunk and walked over to Pinocchio. So you want to be a real boy, eh? Wow, you heard my wish. Are you my fairy godmother? I sure am. To be a real boy, all you have to do is run away from home and join the circus. But Pinocchio didn't feel so good about that. He would miss his papa too much, and he knew his papa would miss him. In fact, the old man was probably wondering why he was taking so long to get that milk. I'm so thirsty. And besides, this fairy godmother looked a little odd. Why are your hands so fuzzy? And why are your ears so big? And why are your teeth so sharp? Wait a second. You're the big bad wolf, aren't you? Are you okay? What took so long? And then Pinocchio made the first real boy decision of his entire life. He told the truth. I used the money to go to the circus. The big bad wolf tried to get me to run away, but I just couldn't leave you. I'm sorry, Papa. It's okay, Pinocchio. I am disappointed, but you did the right thing. You came back and you told the truth and you said you were sorry. And because Pinocchio did that, his wooden nose went back to normal size 
and then it turned into a real nose. And his wooden head, it turned into a real head. And he turned into a real boy. The old man was so happy and they decided to celebrate. And they would have had cookies, but they were still out of milk. So they ate popcorn and cotton candy instead. Delicious. And that's the end of the tale. Want to hear another story? Click here for Princess and the Pea. And let us know what story you want to hear next in the comments below. See you next time. <laughs>